If you've done them before and you're familiar with it, I'll just go over it briefly uh, because it's all in your handout. But uh, what I like to use, there's two methods I like to use, either a microwave, which is the fastest and most convenient, uh, or if you don't have access to a microwave, a pot on the stove. Uh, preferably a steamer kettle where you can steam your towels just like you would do a microwave. Um, and uh, so you want to lay your patient down in a comfortable bed uh, or a comfortable place where they can lay down and relax, make sure they're comfortable with pillows and whatever else. And sometimes I will put a, a, a sheet of plastic or waterproof mattress or something under them to keep the bed from getting ruined from water or sweat. And uh, then to make my, well you can buy special fomentation towels, but, or I should say fomentation pads that you can use, but I'm not rich enough to afford them yet, so I just use towels. And so what I do is I take my bath towel and uh, I fold it in half, you know, like this, and then I fold it in half again. And that is my fomentation pad. And then I will just take that and roll it into a log. And that's how I heat it up. I'll either stick it in the microwave like that, uh, or I'll stick it in the kettle, which obviously you'll need a bigger kettle than this. <laughs> and uh, steam it with a few inches of water underneath it. Uh, and both microwave and a boiling, steaming water takes five minutes to warm up the towel. Uh, if it's already wet and you know you want to make sure it's damp before you put it in the microwave or you'll catch the towel on fire <laughs> make sure the towel is wet wet and you know, not sopping wet you can wring it out just so it's damp but uh, so then um, well maybe I should tell you this before I move on the reason I use fomentations and I have done them a lot uh, on other people I've had other people do them myself taught a lot, of, a lot of people to do them while I was the patient. <laughs> that makes it interesting. But uh, you can use it for back pain, and that's what I've used it for many times. Uh, you can use it for tight muscles, for joint pain. Uh, if you have neck pain, you can use a hand towel and just put it on your neck. Um, and then, of course, the, what most of us know for is congestion. You know, if you have a cough, uh, or a lot of congestion, you can do a chest uh, fomentation instead of a back fomentation. So anyway, uh, while your towels are heating up for that five minutes, you get your patient ready uh, and put, I take uh, two more bath towels full of the same size and lay them down on the patient first. So that way when my hot one comes out, I'm not going to burn them, right? And uh, once I put that on, then I cover that with another towel or blanket to keep it warm because you want that warmth to stay there for four minutes. And uh, I will stay there and closely monitor my patient uh, if uh, they say, oh, it's starting to burn me on this shoulder blade, you know. Uh, have another towel ready to stick under there to give it another layer so it's not so hot for them. Or if they say, you know, they've been sitting there for two minutes, I still don't feel it, then uh, you should take one of your layers out and uh, make it so there's less layers, so they feel it. Cover them with a blanket, uh, a sheet and a blanket, so they're nicely covered and stay warm under there, and let them sit there for the, once they feel the heat for four minutes. While they're doing that, your second fomentation pad is doing its five minutes of heating up, either in the pot or the microwave. And uh, so that way, when they're done with the first one, the second one's just about ready to come out. And uh, so when their four minutes is up, take everything off and uh, get your ice water and washcloth and briskly rub them down with that ice water for 30 seconds. And uh, then put your towels back and your second one is all ready to go. And then of course, when you're doing the second one, the first one can be warming up again. And you should continue the rotations. You should do at least three to five rotations uh, for any treatment. You shouldn't do more than five because then they will start to overheat and uh, it can be really hard on them. But uh, three to five rotations is usually what they recommend. Yes? Question. Someone did that for me one time, and uh, but they put the ice 
had a towel in, in ice water and wrung it out, and they laid it on and left it for a minute or two, and then alternated it. They didn't do the rubbing, so. The reason why you want the rubbing is that uh, stimulates the blood circulation in that area, and so that would actually help more. And they say for a cold, you shouldn't be longer than 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, so sometimes it's like, Oh, I'm so hot, just lay that washcloth on top of me, you know? And then rub it for a few seconds, you know? Uh, do some of both. Um, other people, they're like, hey, I don't want that cold, and you know, they fight it. So just you know, rub it and get it off, get out of the way. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, of course, during the treatment, you want to make sure that you are giving them liquids, and you wanna, you'll need a straw because it'll be hard for them to drink while they're laying down. Uh, and uh, when they are finished, just take the towels off them, do that last pull drug, and then cover them with a sheet and blanket and let them rest for one hour And uh, before you want them to get up and shower off and whatever else they want to do. So that covers pretty much fomentations. Uh, the third one is my favorite one. And it's the half bath. And the reason why I like it is because it's something that as long as you can get in and out of the bathtub, you can do for yourself. Uh, it's not something that uh, there's, you know, serious, serious, uh, you know, hardship if you're trying to do a treatment on yourself. And I have done many, many, many half baths on myself. And uh, the neat thing is because it's a half bath and not a full fever bath, uh, for one, you have less chance of drowning, but for another, it does the exact same thing as a hot foot bath. Because you're not covering your whole body with water, you're only covering your legs. And so the water level is just above your legs. And uh, so it can be used for menstrual cramps, headache, or anything when you're trying to get the congestion, once again, out of your upper body, because it will pull it to your feet and legs. And uh, of course, you will notice there's very few materials needed. You know, your bathtub, your bowl of ice water, uh, something to drink, and then your washcloth and towel, and a body thermometer if you need to monitor your temperature. And that's it. So uh, what I like to do is uh, just soak in warm bath water, pretty much comfortable bath water. Uh, they say between 101 to 108, which is you know warm bath water. Uh, if you want to go hotter, you can. And then uh, if you want, I don't always do this, but sometimes I do, you can take a towel and just cover up your upper half so that you're not cold while you're sitting there. Um, usually the steam from the bathtub warms me up enough, I don't always need it. But if you are cold, you don't want to be chilled, so make sure you got something to cover. And uh, they say you can also take a folded towel if you don't have a pillow and put that behind your head so you can rest against the, the bathroom wall or the shower wall. So then you just want to stay in there, uh, put the ice on your forehead when you get hot, drink some water during the treatment, stay in there for 10 to 20 minutes. And uh, then when you're done, it's my favorite part. You take, you drain your water and you take your washcloth and your bowl of ice water and you do what I call a cold mint friction rub, which is a uh, dip your washcloth in water and scrub an arm and then scrub the other arm and then scrub a leg and the other leg and of course it gets really nice when you get to your stomach and chest because it's like you know <laughs> it's very refreshing but uh, uh, just pretty much rub yourself down with that cold water and that friction stimulates your blood circulation at the same time as the cold water is helping to cool you down so you're not overheated if you don't want to do that, that's too much work, then just take a 30 second cold shower. Um, <laughs> I frankly, I prefer the ice on uh, the washcloth. <laughs> it's a lot better than standing there with that cold shower for 30 seconds. Uh, but anyway, uh, then as soon as you're dry, just go straight to bed. And I like to do that one just before bed. Uh, but you can also do it in the morning. Um, but I like to do it just before bed, just go to bed and sleep. And, if I feel a cold coming on, if I feel a little bit achy uh, or a little tinge of a sore throat, then I will immediately do one of those that very night. And uh, then I will try to sleep for nine or 10 hours. 
and uh, the next morning, usually it's gone. Uh, if you catch it early on, the first, you know, early signs, uh, that will take care of a cold usually by itself. Uh, as long as you're drinking lots of fluids with it and you get plenty of sleep afterwards, uh, you'll do great. And I've also noticed that I sleep really well after one of these too. Uh, if you forget to do enough cold afterwards, you will not sleep well because you'll be so overheated that you'll just be like, <gasps> you know. <laughs> but as long as you end in that cold, it will prevent that from happening. Usually you just lay down 